Hey, what's going on, party people? My name is Kyle, and you're watching the Farewell Party YouTube channel. Today, we're jumping right back into an Outlaws of Thunder Junction draft. A little update on the season, if you're just joining us for the first time. We have played 28 games. We've played four drafts. Uh, we are currently sitting at 18 and 10 on the season. So we're eight games over 500. Good for a 64% win rate. Uh, wear my Kermit shirt so I can manifest maybe some good green bombs here. Double down. It's kind of fun if we can do the outlaw stuff. Neutralize the guards I'm not super, super into. Magbane Lizard is kind of cool. I don't know if it's really first pick material. Scorching Shot is nice too, but I don't think it's also first pick material. Um, overall, kind of a weak pack, I think. Um, you know, when in doubt, I might just try and speculate on the Mythic here. I mean, you always kind of want to test out with the Mythics, especially since it's so early in the season. Um, other things that I do not mind are uh, Terminal Agony, but it is a du dual color spell, so I'm not super into that as first pick. Mystical Tether I am into. I don't know if it's really first pick material, though. Hmm. Um, yeah, I'll try the double down. I mean, there's nothing else that I really, really want out of here, so I'm, I'm good with just taking the Mythic and moving on. So uh, up next, we got some two really, really good uh, blue-white control cards. We got Marauding Sphinx and Canyon Crab. Um, it's kind of anti-synergy with the with the blue card we just took, so not great in that department. But you know, it's just it's pick two, so we can just kind of take whatever card is best at this point. Desperate Bloodseeker did a lot of work for us yesterday when we went seven and one with a self mill Sultai deck with Bonnie Paul. So I think. Um, I do I do like Cactarantula quite a bit. I think I might just go Marauding Sphinx. Um, you know, once again, just kind of talking about how this format is shaping up. It's a, it's quite a bit slower than previous formats. And I think if we're going to go down a blue route today, um, I think I'd rather have this as the power card over green right now. Uh, Canyon Crab would be nice to wheel, but I don't really expect it to. It'd be nice to get two of these deserts back, though. All right, one last job. Let's see what this does. Three mana spree. Two return creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's cool. For five five mana, not horrible. One return target mount or vehicle from graveyard to the battlefield. That's pretty cool. Return target or equipment. Uh, not really into that. So take up the shield is awesome. Fleeting reflection. Target creature you control gains hexproof until end of turn. Untap that creature. Uh, I don't know if I'm into that one. So I think now uh, we're just going to, I think we're going to try and pivot into like a control strategy. I think here we're going to take Desert's Dew just because it's a really nice um, two mana spell that will kill a lot of things. Frontier Seeker is also good. It can get you a Plains. I kind of want to try out the blue-black archetype, so I'll, I'll go with uh, Desert's Dew. None of the other blue cards really struck, stuck out to me. Back-to-back, -back, one last job is kind of funny. Okay, this is uh, this is interesting. Um, there's quite a few good green cards here. This is kind of a tough pack. Um, kind of <laughs> kind of figured out what what stuff is open here. It's it's a little bit tough. Um, hmm. I think I'm gonna take a hard bristle bandit. Uh, just because it'll be a nice ramp to get to the bigger cards here. We've now seen two Cactarantulas, so possibly we could see one wheel. Uh, the alternative would be to to go take a Desperate Bloodseeker and stay in black here. Maybe that is the move. Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll take a flyer on the Bloodseeker right now. Nomen Path Journey enters a battlefield. Search your library for up to five land cards that have different names. Exile them to shuffle. At the beginning of your end step, choose a... Huh, that's weird. <laughs> I don't think that's for us. Um, two back-to-back -back Patient Naturalists, so that's awesome. Uh, that synergizes well with Desperate Bloodseeker here. I think... Um, I think this is probably our path to victory again. We're gonna, we're gonna go the self-mill self -mill route. 
So if we're going to go self mill route, we're looking for um, more of the uh, the millers. Obviously, we're also looking for the the burrow fiend, the saddle that also mills, and then obviously we're looking for uh, recursion like badland revival back for more, and then obviously the also the just like larger curve creatures to bring back. So I think the um, the two the two things that I'm looking at right here are Skullduggery or Take the Fall. Skullduggery is a really cool combat trick. I think I probably prefer it over Take the Fall in this deck, uh, since we're, it seems like we're going more of a, a black route right now. Uh, I don't think it can be overstated enough how good that uh, draw card for one mana is, though. Oh, wow. Yeah, Pack 7, Badlands Revival. And you know what? Buried in the Garden is also, also an awesome uh, pick 7 here. But I think I think we want to just go ahead and get the Badlands Revival Brew in here. It's just such an awesome card. There have been a lot of Ravens, so there might be a cool uh, Outlaw deck coming around. But I think our Double Down is probably not going to be used today. We've got a pretty good start to another Sultai, Sultai Brew here, so I'm pretty excited. Oh, wow. Yeah, and we got a Desert. That's really good. Free Strider Commando, I do, I do like, uh, but I think I just prioritize getting the Desert here. Uh, if we're going to play three colors again, I'd rather have the fixing early on. Lone Shark is nice too. He's a good body. He'd be like a decent uh, target to bring back. He also draws a card if we get to double spell. Ride Down is cool, but it's not really for us. Uh, it's for more for like the aggro, like Boros type deck. So did we get anything cool coming back? Not really. I think uh, I think I'll just go ahead and take the the Lone Shark. Gold Rush is a neat combat trick, but I don't think we're really looking to looking to lose many battles here. So I'll go ahead and take the Lone Shark. Don't know if we're going to end up playing it. All right, here. Make your own death could be fun if we get some get some big creatures. Is it better than Canyon Crab? We uh, we played Canyon Crab yesterday, and it it worked for us like precisely once. Uh, you know, if we're playing the slow slow route, maybe we should just take the crab again. I haven't had a I haven't had a problem finding um, Baker on Death late in the drafts, so I'm I'm good with taking the Canyon Crab now because I think it's more of a premium pick. I think I'll take the Peerless Rope Master. Not super thrilled about playing it, but it is a it is a larger creature to play. Here, I will just go ahead and take the... Uh, you know what? I'll take the Silver Deputy in case we do need some fixing down the line. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. So that's the payoff here. We got a Rise of the Varmint pick 13. And we're the self-mill deck. Yeah, I'm into that. Slick shot show off is awesome, but unfortunately not in our colors. Treasure dredger, um, it could be actually could be all right for fixing in a slow deck here. Another patient naturalist is awesome, but I think we got to take back for more. Oh man, yeah, pack one or pack two, pick one back for more, and we got the Badlands revival. Would really like to see ambush gigapede wheel here. As far as big cards, I uh, would also like to see naturalist wheel. So we've got we've got two mill outlets right now. We would love to see a naturalist again, but I think we we've, we've just got to take the the back for more here. Oh, Roxanne. Do we splash for red here? Oh, she's so good. Whenever she enters a battlefield or attacks, create a tap colorless artifact named Meteorite and it deals two damage to any target and it can fix you mana. Whenever you tap an artifact token for mana, you get two of it. So just going to check to see if there's anything else that I'd rather be playing. Repulse is awesome. Uh, it, it, it did really well for us in the deck yesterday. Ball Plunder is also an awesome three drop. But I think I, I think I got to take the take the flyer on Roxanne. It just seems so fun to play with. Yeah, I'm pretty thrilled to try and make that work. And, you know, even even if we can't really make it work, just like by hard casting it, we can just bring it back. The trail at the vault is cool. Hmm. I don't know if it's really 
second pick material or pick three material rather. But the the rest of the pack is pretty weak, so I think maybe the the pick is just to take the ambush gigapede here. It's just a big reanimator target. I would like to see betrayal at the vault come back though. Maybe I should be taking the uncommon. Uh, you know what? I think I'm good with the Gigapede. What is this? Ionize. Counter target spell. Probably not for us. Be spawn to Outcaster is going to be cool. I don't mind that. Oh, Cactarantula is awesome. Yeah, that's probably the pick here. Would really like a desert. Do you think we can get a Cactarantula on the swing back? The lands seem to be tougher to get a hold of. So maybe maybe I should just take the, the fixing while it's available. Or should I should I take that or should I take the Mesa? Uh, I mean the, the desert's on color, so might as well take the desert right now. Throw from the saddle, yeah, that's awesome. Love seeing that. It is at the expense of a bloodseeker. But I think I think throw from the saddle is just too good. Uh, you target creature you control gets plus one plus one till end of turn. Uh, the the mount counter doesn't really matter to us, but it deals damage to power target creature we don't control. Just an awesome removal spell uh, for a deck that's gonna kind of lack in uh, in interaction. It kind of feels like at this point. So I think I yeah we'll take the throw from the saddle here. Commandeer, not really into. You call it Ranch, what does that one do? And this only to cast a mount, so that's not really for us. Dance of the Tumbleweeds is fun. I think I'm going to take that. It just, it put in a lot of work for us yesterday. It got to, it was able to ramp us, and it just makes a big, big token. Corrupted Conviction is pretty cool to, to draw some cards. But I think the just the raw power of Dance of the Tumbleweeds is the is the way to go here. Ariet, uh, not not for us probably. Oh wow, kind of a loaded pack for us here. Do we take the Badlands Revival or do we take the second Rise of the Varmints? Well, that's actually kind of tough. I feel like I think I think we'll go ahead and take a second Rise of the Varmints. That's just awesome. I'm excited to play with this. Metamorphic Blast, probably not. Uh, I, th I just think it's probably too slow for us. Oh, wow. Pick 8, Patient Naturalist. Yeah, we're we're cooking now. I'm excited. We're doing some more fun stuff. Alright, so we got the Treasure Dredger. Adijin. Ambush Gigapi did wheel here. Then we've got the giant beaver. Whenever he attacks while saddled, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature that saddled it this turn. I don't know if we're going to play really any of these cards right now, but I'll just go ahead and take the two drop in case we want to go ahead and play it later. Uh, right now I'm going to take the vault plunderer. We get to draw a card. Um, the deck is kind of lacking in draw card, draw card spells right now, so I'll, I'm perfectly happy with a pack 10 there, or pick 10 there. Just go ahead and take the Hound. Not really interested in playing that. Take the Geyser Drake. Oh yeah, pack th or pick 13, Desperate Bloodseeker. Feeling good. Alright, pick three. Pack three. Oh, Vraska! Wow. Okay. Vraska. So whenever a non-token creature an opponent control dies, you may pay one. If you do, return that creature to the battlefield under your control. Tapped. The treasure token. Okay. That might be the pick. We got another mythic to play with. That's fun. Other cards that we might be interested in is murder. It's a pretty good interaction spell here. Just a good way to get rid of a an opponent's creature. Uh, overzealous muscle for like one of the big reanimator targets. But otherwise, a fairly weak pack. Um, that are, I mean, for our colors at least, Krom is really good, but unfortunately that ship has sailed. 
Yeah, uh, let's just try the on-color mythic here. No way! We got overwhelming forces! Yes! We got a board wife and we get to draw a card for each creature. Could you imagine playing a Rise of the Varmints with like five creatures in the graveyard and then playing overwhelming forces? Oh, this is so sweet. I'm excited. Yes, yes, we are playing that. Uh, there's really not even anything else that we want to play here, so... We got a pretty cool list bre brewing again. And another Rise of the Varmints. <laughs> do we just... Do we take three? Do we take three of them? Can an opponent really do anything about that? That's just so sick. Would love to get Repulse back, but... I kind of want to do the dream of three Rise of the Varmints here. Well, dang, are we are we mostly just a black green deck now? Do we really need the the blue? It's actually a decent question. Boy, there's really not much in here at all for us. I don't think. Uh, I think when in doubt, might as well just take a desert. I th I guess. Uh, we could take a, a fixer. Tumbleweed Rising, I'm not super into. Yeah, I'll just, I'll take that. Pibblethip is funny, but not really for us. That's more for, like, the, the blue-red plot deck. Jailbreak Scheme is cool if we want to stay in blue. That'll help us kind of get to the late game, throw, throw opponent off tempo. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, Nimble Brigand, I've, I've thought has been overperforming. Uh, but we are not really the outlaw deck, so I'm I'm good with uh, taking the jailbreak scheme here. Oh no, maybe corrupted conviction because we can. Yeah, I think that was I think that was the right move because we we're gonna have a lot of sacrifice outlets for the rise of the varmints here. What's our deck looking like? We got 12 creatures to 11 non creatures, but we've got a lot of creatures in the form of rise of the varmint here. I think the pick here is just to take the fall, maybe? Or maybe maybe it's Free Strider Commando, because that'd be a really good reanimator target. Synergize as well there. Oh my gosh, a fourth rise of the varmints, are you serious? Am I am I greedy enough to take that, or should I just take a Vault Plunderer? Hmm. We really still don't have much in the way of draw spells. So I think I mean we've got three Rise of the Varmints. I think we I think we need draw spells a little bit more at this point. While it is fun. Um just just gotta We need to not die first. Uh take a second, ambush Giga P. Probably won't play a second, but it's cool to have. Unscrupulous Contractor is actually pretty good if we've got Rise of the Varmints. So maybe maybe we've got kind of like a self-mill and a sacrifice strategy going here. Ooh, a second Corrupted Conviction is actually pretty cool. So in hindsight, that uh, now that we've got two Corrupted Convictions, it does feel a little bad that we took the second Vault Plunderer over the fourth Rise of the Varmints, but I'm still pretty happy with how this draft is come out here. Uh, Boneyard Desecrator, just not super into, but I'll take it anyway. Tumbleweed Rising. So we got kind of hosed as far as fixing. So maybe, maybe we should just kind of scale down the blue cards here. So how many discard outlets, or mill outlets, do we have? We've got four, which is actually really good. Unfortunately, no Burrow Fiend. So we've got no way to... Hmm. Is it worth playing the blue? Probably not, right? But without the blue, what big creatures... Do we have coming back? We just don't have a lot of huge creatures coming back, to be honest. We're we're kind of more more so all in on the Rise of the Varmint strategy. OK, 
Okay, so... I think... Wow, we've only got one 4-drop in the creature slot here. Uh, Rope Master can go. I think we definitely want to ambush Gigapedes. Just because we are we are actually lacking on the top end here. So maybe... It's actually pretty tough. Um, so we've only got two deserts, which is actually not great for us. Maybe we only want one Corrupted Conviction. I definitely do want to try Roxanne, so maybe cutting blue out actually is the move here. And we've only got really... Not, not great targets to bring back. Free Strider Commando is a good good uh, target, but I guess we only have two reanimator spells, so it's not that big of a deal. So what? So we, we have totally cut out blue. I think that makes the splash for Roxanne a little bit easier to pull off here. Two mountains, I think, will probably get the job done. Uh, we do have a tutor for land, so that's nice. Let's see what our ramp is looking. 12 creatures to 11 non-creatures, but three of the non-creatures are Rise of the Varmints. Uh, pretty, pretty similar on forest and swamps. So yeah, I think I'm I think I'm pretty okay with this deck. This seems like it'll be pretty fun. Alright. Can we start a 7 and no run? We did it. We actually did get the, the Kermit manifestation here with Roxanne. Roxanne is busted, man. I'm excited to play with her. Yesterday, Bonnie Paul. Today, we got Roxanne. So we got the red. I mean, it's really good if we get the, the third land drop here. Play Patient Naturalist on turn three, hopefully get a good land back. Ooh, that's rough. Don't have the black. So, uh, we we need a third land and we need a black mana. Oh, no. Okay, tough draws to start here. Yep, and they're going to be ramping quite, quite hard here. Outcaster Greenblade is a card that I would have really loved to see in the draft. We did get our third land. Go ahead and play the Patient Naturalist. Be a decent blocker against the Outcaster Greenblade here. Ooh, we did get our black back. That's good. So next turn... Probably Desperate Bloodseeker to keep uh, filling up the Rise of the Varmints here. Oh, we drew the Overwhelming Forces. Can we, can we survive long enough to see it happen? So, do you think we should go ahead and play Desperate Bloodseeker and then throw from the saddle just to stop Outcaster from getting bigger? Or do we want to wait for the throw from the saddle? I mean, just playing the Desperate Bloodseeker makes it pretty inefficient on mana, so that's kind of rough. Or do we just want to play the Vault Plunder to make sure we keep hitting land drops? I think I'm actually good with that, because now it's good enough to uh, block efficiently the Green Blade here. Drew the Roxanne, so if we do get a Leia next turn, that's sweet. We can play her. No attacks. Flashed in, holy cow, that's pretty good. Opponent seems to have a pretty cool deck. Uh, Sheriff of Safe Passage, not super thrilled. Haven't been super thrilled with, but... Um, Hard Bristle Bandit is good. Yeah, our, our opponent has a pretty cool deck. Oh, dang. No land. I am kind of struggling here. Yeah, I think just playing the Vraska here is good enough. I'll go ahead and attack in with the Vault Plunder. Plunderer. 
So we've got we've got a full grip of awesome cards. We just need to keep drawing lands. Hopefully we can do that. Opponents popping off, and Sheriff of Safe Passage actually does look pretty good here. Is that what we're going to go ahead and throw from the saddle? And man, we've still still not hitting our land drops. Uh, that's okay, because we've still got interaction to do. So let me just make sure that this does what I think it will do. It deals damage, so Vraska will be able to get rid of the Sheriff of Safe Passage. So I think that's probably the move here. Oh, do they have a like a snakeskin veil? That'd be pretty rough for us. What? <laughs> what was that? Okay. Your shot target creature you control gets plus one plus one until the turn deals damage you control. Deals damage equal to his power. Okay, so we both we both lose here. Oh no! Just me lose. Okay, well that's rough. Uh just put a put another blocker out there, I guess. I'm probably gonna mill a land here. Oh no, we didn't. That's actually really good for us. So next turn I think we have to probably rise of the varmints to get some good blockers up. Yeah, we're just kind of on the back foot right now. Oh, wow. Yeah, our opponent drew insane here. Uh, I think I'll go ahead and chump the Sheriff. And I will block the Prosperity Tycoon with Patient Naturalist. That'll get us two more creatures in the graveyard. Kind of expected that. But I'm perfectly fine with sending two more to the bin here. So we did get our land. It is a slow land, but that's okay, because we were going to play Rise of the Varmints anyway. So now we got six of these Varmints. And just hold back for blocking purposes. Is there anything we want to bring back with Badlands Revival right now? Not really. Just kind of Vraska at this point. And Vraska's not particularly great, I don't think. Should I just play Roxanne? Or should I get rid of Holy Cow with the Desert's Dew? I'd like to get rid of the Desert's Dew here. Or I'd, I'd like to get rid of the Holy Cow. We're at 10. We're at... Hmm. It's kind of a tough decision, to be honest. I think I just want more mana from the Roxanne, right? Ooh, if we can get to the Overwhelming Forces... <laughs> Maybe should have... Oh, yeah, probably should have... I didn't realize uh, Roxanne was any target. That's actually really good. That was a misplay on my part. Probably shouldn't have uh, hit, hit face there. But if we can get to Overwhelming Forces, we're at 5, 6, 7 mana right now. If we get one land, we, dr <laughs> we draw our deck, basically. That's so sick. We, we actually just got there. Okay. So let's go ahead and attack with everything. Go ahead and attack face. Now, since we know that Overwhelming Forces is coming. This is going to be a big turn here. We got to make sure that we don't draw our entire deck, actually. Oh, it only destroys all tr 
creatures of target opponent controls. That's that's a lot better. Oh, I could have kept Roxanne. That's a horrible, horrible misplay. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, dang, now I kind of don't want my opponent to know that I did that. Go ahead and get rid of... You know what? Actually, I think I just kind of... You know what? We'll do uh, back for more. The Roxanne. That feels pretty good still. We will... Yeah, if they, wait, if they have a way to pump the Congregation Griff, that's pretty bad, but it's, I think we really need to get rid of the Hymn. Oh, uh, we can make sure it does... Yeah, I think that's just fine. So it looks like they do have a pump spell. Ooh, it's indestructible. Okay. Well, we'll go ahead and get rid of the Holy Cow then. Oh no, I lose. Okay, so this was a good example of, please roast me in the comments for maybe the worst I, I literally was going to win this game. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's... That's pretty boneheaded, Kyle. Goodness gracious. I still had fun, though. <laughs> you know what? That may be, like, bottom five play I've ever made. But, uh, you know, we, we keep on trucking. But we, we did get to see the power of the deck, so you know we're always we're always due for one of those goof losses. We got the got the got the first game jitters out of the way, we can start playing for real now. Roxanne did put in a lot of work. Alright, just take a deep breath. Let's start over. We're we're uh, we're playing to win now. We gotta turn to Desperate Bloodseeker, I think that's just good enough to keep here. Got a Rise of the Varmints in hand. Maybe playing the double spell deck, which is a little scary. Because they tend to be a little bit quicker than what we're trying to play here. Razzle Dazzler is good. Boy, we are getting stuck on land quite a bit here, huh? Mill. And <laughs> Mill or green card. That's okay. Yeah, a couple, couple of rough, rough lane games so far. Let's see what our opponent can do on turn three here. They're thinking pretty hard. I can't believe I messed up that last game so bad. That's horrible. You guys really need to be roasting me in the comments for that. <laughs> Holy crap. I'm almost embarrassed to put that on the internet. Just a Scalestorm Summoner. Still don't have our green, which is a little upsetting. Do I want to... Yeah, I think I do want to go ahead and... Oh, do I just want to plot the, the Contractor? Yeah, I think I'll, I'll do that. I was going to play him and sack the Bloodseeker so we could draw two, but I think I'd rather just kind of balk at that decision till next turn. Just seeing what, if we can draw another land, hopefully a green land. I've been seeing Bandit's Hall pop up a little bit more, and I think it's actually pretty good. Maybe I should be picking that higher for, for these uh, slower decks here. Go ahead and block. Bloodseeker's done his job. We did get the green mana, so that's good. Is searching for another land here just going to be too slow? We're still at 20. But they probably are looking to double spell next turn. 
They're going to have five mana next turn. They got three cards in hand, about to be four. Razzle Dazzler would probably go up to a 2 3. They'll be attacking for five. Would I rather just pop off one of the Rise of the Varmints here and draw two off the Unscrupulous Contractor? I think that's a decent move since I've got a, a Rise of the Varmints already in hand still, or two of them, had two of them in hand. And we got two land off the top, so I, I think that was a pretty good interaction there. So what, what can we do next turn? <laughs> we could we could go ahead and keep sacrificing the varmints here. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Ooh, Eartha Joe is good. Yep, that's pretty rough. All right, so this costs five mana to get the the big boy here. I don't think we are going to use the the search for a land card, so I think I'm fine just making a, a big 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 token here. So we'll get a five five. It does currently attack over everything that they have, so that's cool. We're just a good blocker. It is dirtily, so they can pretty easily find a way to out it, I feel like. Uh, even the, the double red pipped instant, I think, or it might be a sorcery. It deals exactly five damage. Uh, explosive derailment, funnily enough, does not beat the five five here. Blue red does tend to play a lot of bounce spells, so we could just be out of luck there. So maybe, maybe a five mana five five, like vanilla is not super great, but I think it was the best best thing that we had to play. Rise of the Varmints is still at two. Yep, they did have the they did have exactly the scorching shot. That's funny. I think I'm pretty okay with them using that though. If they attack, I'm gonna block with the contractor to get another another card in the graveyard. Wow. Yeah, that was pretty good. Another sweet deck from the opponent. Yeah, once we... Uh, I've, I'm noticing an uptick in quality of decks now that we're getting into like the, the higher gold ranks and stuff. Boy, those are all pretty rough blocks, huh? They are tapped out, so I think maybe I should just go ahead and double block the Eartha Joe. We'll take nine, go down to nine. I think we do, do just need to do that. Oh, I guess they do have Bandit's Hall. They could still have some type of pump spell. I think that's a risk that we kind of have to take at this point. And it did work out in our favor to some extent. Another the Rise of the Varmints. Uh, we'll go ahead and play a Festering Gulch. So next turn we can possibly play the Ambush Gigapede. Right now we just have to throw out another Rise of the Varmints, I think. Just to be able to survive next turn. So we could potentially Corrupted Conviction if we don't see a need to go ahead and block everything. That could be pretty risky, though. Oh, no, we could. Uh, we can just do this after we block something. So that's good. Before damage, Cal. Once again, a little bit on the back foot. We do have another Rise of the Varmints coming in next turn. 
So it's it's actually a decent staller right now. Yep, they keep making pretty good attackers here. Go ahead and block, block, and block. Then corrupted conviction, sacking him. Draw two. Hmm. So we got two kill spells. Is that good enough? So now we don't even have a creature to be able to... Hmm. So, if we... so we can only play Rise of the Varmints and then one of these spells. But we do need to run out the Rise of the Varmints or else we just get steamrolled next turn. Throw from the saddle is actually not great here because it'll only put one of these up to a a three or a three two, and it won't kill like the actual problem children. Ooh, that's kind of rough. Hmm. Okay, we'll um, we'll wait till their turn to play deserts do. Whoa. Yep. So we're we're kind of waiting for board wipe or bus next turn, because if we, uh, I mean we can't just do we we just can't do much unless um, oh, that's cool key to the vault. I don't know how great it is for limited, but that's cool. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you can look at that many top cards of the library, exile it, put, it, put the rest on the bottom. You may cast it. Yeah, you cast things for free with the key to the vault. It is just a really expensive equipment spell, though. Yeah, this is pretty precarious for us. We need exactly the board wipe or we're toast. Because we have exhausted all of our Rise of the Varmints. And they are able to, to suit up the Razzle Dazzler. Creating more big boys. So block the Dazzler, block the Storm Summoner, and the Dinosaur. We take three. We Deserts do... Do we Deserts do the Scale Storm Summoner? Because it keeps making just a bunch of attackers. I think that's probably the best option here. Go down to five. Not gonna do it. Um, three, six, seven, eight. So we can play the ambush gigapede. Give the mercenary minus two, minus two. And then throw from the saddle, maybe? Uh, what do we want to throw from the saddle, though? I think it's probably the Razzle Dazzler before it gets super, super out of hand. So that actually was a pretty good interaction for us. That was a pretty good turn. We did somewhat stabilize. Would have liked to play the Ambush Gigapede at flash speed, but um, we needed the throw from the saddle and throw from the saddle as a sorcery. Yep. So the hits keep coming here. That's rough. So they are going to get to play something for free. That was a really good pick up there, putting it on the Wrangler. Yeah, we just got to kill the... Take out the biggest one here. Go down to two. Hold on to your butts. What did they get? And we drew a land. Okay. Hit him with a good game, and we will pass. Or concede. Ooh. <laughs> okay. O2. 
Well, I did feel a little bit better about that game and the fact that I don't think there were really glaringly obvious misplays. We just got too, too hamstrung on lands for a little bit, a little bit too long there. We are playing the normal amount of lands, though. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We're playing 17. It is a higher average mana value deck. What's been underperforming for us so far? Hmm. Do we need to make any type of changes here? I don't I do not want to play Silver Deputy. Maybe Oasis Gardener is a gain gain two life. Hmm. What do we take out for it though? I have um You know what? We're gonna we're gonna live and die by by the deck we have now. So let's go ahead and play. I would like to see at least one win on the day, but this deck is too sweet not to get at least one win. I still had fun drafting it though. The deck is cool. We are just not getting the draws like we had yesterday. This is pretty brutal, but it does have a lot of the cards that we want in our hand. Opponents going first. I think we need a mulligan. We need we need early action. What are these draws, man? I'll keep. Um, I think probably sending back the swamp, even though that could be rough considering the, the mana troubles we've had so far. Okay, so we we did we did get our third land drop, so that'll be good. We got the turn two Bloodseeker, turn three Plunderer. We got Rise of the Varmints with the con Corrupted Conviction. And opponents on a slow strategy, it looks like. So maybe things are going to turn around for us here. They could just simply outvalue us, though, which is concerning. That's for Bloodseeker. Mill, hopefully just nothing but creatures. Or just two straight lands. Just the way it goes. Three straight lands off the top. Okay. Now that is how magic is going to play today. That's fine. Draw a card and lose a life here. Wow, four lands off the top now. Glad we're digging through early in the game. So opponent is presenting Teamer right now. Our Bristle Bandit is good, but we're starting to punch in here. Five lands off the top. I mean, that's just kind of goofy, right? We'll go ahead and plot the Rise of Varmints. I think we'll go ahead and swing in with the Desperate Bloodseeker again. Well, maybe I should just go ahead and attack for all. Attack with all. So if they do block here, might as well get some value off the Vault Plunderer, I think. That was a sixth land off the top, folks. <laughs> but we have hit some more action, which is another Rise of the Varmints. So maybe running three without as many mill strategies or mill cards in the deck maybe isn't super great. I still think the card is awesome, though, but maybe it's like a two of. So they seem perfectly fine sitting back. We did get a Roxanne, but I am kind of terrified of five open mana here. 
So I think I'm perfectly fine just staring at the opponent, plotting my Rise of the Varmints here, and just attacking. Maybe sandbagging the Roxanne is probably not the, the move to make, but I mean, I just think it's too risky, especially with two blue up. I mean, that's that's every mage's worst nightmare, seeing the two blue. Opponent is thinking pretty hard here. So our, uh, our old Desperate Bloodseeker here is getting in for quite a bit of value. We've gained a lot of life, they've lost a lot. Okay. Hello, Alchemist. Interesting. So they gave their Silver Deputy... Made a Silver Deputy of 4-4. That's pretty cool. We are now back down to our starting life total. Overwhelming Forces. It's pretty sick. I actually don't know if that's quite the card that we really want in this deck. So they still got one blue up and three cards in hand. Go ahead and attack. We're at six mana. In two turns, we can Overwhelming Forces. They're going to go ahead and block with the Bandit. Maybe a Pump Spell's coming? Or they've just got enough uh, land at this point that Bandit doesn't really matter much anymore. Oh, interesting. Okay. Then yeah, I think I'm going to just go ahead and roll out the old Roxanne here. Do we want to go face or do we want to... Take out the bandit. I think we'll get the bandit here. And I think now Rise of the Varmints at 2 is probably just good enough to play 1 right now. Maybe should have put more pressure on and uh, brought out 4. Kind of expected that. Top Cold doesn't get any abilities anymore, so that's kind of rough. And it avoids uh, finding the graveyard, which is also pretty tough. They do have a pretty strong board now, but now we're able to Overwhelming Forces. Do we want to do that yet? I think I kind of just want to Rise of the Varmints and... Hmm. You know what? First game... First game, I was really hesitant to play Overwhelming Forces. Maybe I should just go ahead and play it. You know what? I'll go ahead and attack and see what they do here. If they don't block, that's really good for us. Wow. Okay. So we can just... Wow. Wow. Pretty interesting. They're pretty pretty scared about damage, it feels like. Um, yeah, we'll throw out a second Rise of the Varmints here. We'll have Deserts do up. They only got two cards in hand. Pretty bad for them, being the stall deck. Kinda. What did they plot? Lone Shark. Lone Shark is good. Go ahead and Deserts do the Rockets Entertainer. Gives. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the 1-1 one, one counter is only for creatures that enter the battlefield this turn. We're getting in for 4. Holding up Overwhelming Forces in, in case things go really sour for us. Okay. 
So the deck is still kind of working against us in this game, but uh, we're, we're kind of outvaluing the opponent. So the plotting the, the varmints here actually did do pretty good work this game. What is opponent doing here? Not using the auto tapper. Must have something special to play. Hopefully it's a creature and not just like a, a regular spell. They're touching my card, so I think it's probably a removal spell. Delta pay, okay. Okay, so I feel pretty good about that. They did play two creatures. So I'll go ahead and Overwhelming Forces them. <laughs> yeah. Attack for four. We've got four more Varmints coming in, and we're attacking for four. They've got to land, we win. All right, so we did get we did get one win on the day so far. Overwhelming Forces was not particularly overwhelming, but it did do the final blow there. You know, we, we killed two and drew two for eight mana, but it did put the game away, so... It, I mean, it, it performed. Performed as advertised. Let's see if we can get to two and two here. Interesting hand. No mill outlets, which is concerning. Two deserts off the top. Our mana will be good. Need to find a red. I think I'll just roll out the Unscrupulous Contractor for no value next turn, or I could plot it. Kind of depends on what they play. Okay. Uh, in that case, I will go ahead and Vault Plunderer to draw. Into another draw, Vault Plunderer. That's pretty good. So we're kind of on the value train right now. They plotted Spide Woods, Paladin. That's pretty good. I think we'll just go ahead and do... Another Vault Plunder, or do we want the Commando to come in and be a, a blocker for the Paladin? Hmm. Kind of... I guess we could do a double block with the Vault Plunder when the time comes. So we got our 6 land for back for more, but we still don't have the red for Roxanne, which is a little tough. Plotting again. Priest Rider Commando this time. Pretty good. Another green. Okay. So we'll go ahead and play our black card. We will plot our own Priest Rider Commando. No attacks. Hold up some... I mean, there'll be blockers enough to, to get rid of the Paladin, but that... It is kind of a feels bad, but it does put two cards in the graveyard for Rise of the Varmints. Yeah, I think it's worth double blocking here. If they have a pump spell, they have a pump spell. Yeah. Or are we just going to get dusted here? Another land off the top, okay. So pretty, pretty rough day in the office for the old 
land cards here. Back for more doesn't really do anything right now. I, I mean, it wouldn't be able to get rid of the big threats here. But just try and stall with the Rise of the Varmints. I think we got to roll out the Free Strider Commando. So he'll be a 5-5. Five five. We've got six mana at our disposal. I guess we could plot the Rise of the Varmints and play the Unscrupulous Contractor. Uh, yeah, I think that's fine. Brutally need a red. But at this point, I think we're playing for overwhelming forces or busts. Nope, decline. Yeah, actually, maybe if we were digging for that, maybe we should have uh, waited so we can sack one of the varmints here with the contractor to draw to. Yeah, this, this deck may have been a, a deck-building error on my part. Maybe we had too big of a, a late game and didn't focus too much on the early game. Yeah, that's pretty rough. Uh, just block the 5-5. Five, five. Take 6. Go down to 7. We do have 4 Rise of the Varmints in... We've got black. I guess we could back for more the unscrupulous contractor and I guess take out the, the ankle biter. Doesn't seem incredible. Oh, uh, we could do we could do free strider commando and oh, it does fight. See, that is really not great. Six mana to... F hmm. Okay, yeah. Since it an it's an instant speed, we'll see what we can do here. See what we can do to not die. Pretty scary. If we double block varmints on the paladin, we'll still get in. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Wow. He's got vigilance, trample, haste. I didn't realize he had haste. Woof. And his trample. Oh my gosh, guys. We just went under 500 for the first time this series. Oh, they're holding back? That doesn't seem right. What does he do? When he dies, create a number of tapped. <laughs> Good lord, they're just going to have mana forever. So, what do we need to do to survive this? If I block here, they'll take, or I'll take five. These are not great blockers if we're facing down a trample. Hmm. Yeah, just block with one, I think. Because that'll take it down to a five toughness. And we back for more the Free Strider Commando to get rid of the Gold Vein Hydra. It feels bad. <laughs> Another Rise of the Varmints off the top. I mean, it's... What can we do here? What? We will be able to block Spinewood's Paladin with all these varmints. <laughs> can we stall out for one more turn here? Seven varmints. In a normal game, this would be pretty good. Yeah, we're just we're just taking a beating by the big green stuff here. This is a really cool deck. Wow, they just had everything. 
That's awesome. Now they got six treasures. <laughs> Is Gold Vein Hydra good? Oh, they had a fling to kill me. That's actually cool. I'm I'm okay with losing to that. Wow. So pretty pretty rough day. Hmm. Yeah. A one three. One and three. First time we went under five hundred. You know it's the it's the yin and yang of of gaming here. So what did what did we learn? Corrupted Conviction actually is pretty cool with Rise of the Varmints. Um, I will say, maybe maybe I shouldn't have been playing such high high curve stuff. Uh, maybe you should have been trying to get more of the the. Um, oh my God! What is it called? Um, not fixing, but ramp to get to overwhelming forces. I think we actually had pretty good draw draw spells, or we had a decent draw engine. Um, you know, game one was totally on me, but to be honest, it, it felt, uh, with how few games we were able to play, we, we were pretty stuck, either fully stuck on mana or fully stuck too much mana. I don't like to mention that, you know, for, for why we lose or win most of the time, but, I mean, you you watch the video, it wasn't, it wasn't the greatest... Uh, showing by MTG Arena Shuffler today. But I still had a lot of fun playing with this deck. I think a different version of this could be better. I think maybe more of the Bloodseekers, more of the Naturalists. But, I mean, we had two of each, and we really just didn't see it all that much. Um, Vraska didn't really have her time to shine. We just didn't get to play much with this deck. Uh, Roxanne was, was cool when we had her. Um... It was just it was it was tough to play her like that last game, uh, playing playing three three colors really kind of bit us. But overall, uh, the deck is cool. Unfortunately, kind of a tough day for it. But that's okay. Uh, if you if you made it to this video, what's wrong with you? <laughs> please roast me in the comments. Please like the video. Um, please please uh, please subscribe for more. You know. Uh, so, oh, just a quick pro programming note. Uh, I know this is, like, brand new for me. Uh, I just wanted to point out uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday is going to be probably the the upload schedule from now on. So expect drafts at Laws of Thunder Junction for the foreseeable future. One a day on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So, with that being said, thank you all for watching. Farewell party. Farewell party, people.